On August 29, 2021, Hurricane Ida slammed the Louisiana coast with Category 4 winds. Over a million people lost power in the state. In all, the storm caused nearly $100 billion in damages. Luckily, cities like New Orleans avoided massive flooding, unlike when Hurricane Katrina brought in catastrophic tidal surges exactly 16 years earlier. Along the coast, it was another story. Communities such as Point Echens lost 68 of their 80 homes. This village of mostly indigenous fishermen saw roofs blown off, houses ripped open, and entire buildings leveled. It's heartbreaking. So much devastation. We've never had a hurricane like this. Never. But for those on the coast, this won't be the last time wind and water threaten their homes. Louisiana loses about a football field of land every hour. Sea level rise and stronger and wetter storms have eaten away at its shores for decades. Coastal Louisiana is really facing uh, an existential crisis. For the last 100 years or so, we've lost almost 4,000 square miles of our coastal wetlands. Those wetlands are where lots of people live. It's where uh, livings are made. Uh, it's the basis for our culture and our heritage here in South Louisiana. To save itself, the state is undertaking the biggest engineering plan in its history, the mid Barataria Sediment Diversion Program, a $2 billion project that would divert the Mississippi River and rich land-building sediment to its eroding marshland. The project is run by the state's Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, or the CPRA. The agency was formed after Katrina. It manages the 50-year, $50, $50 billion master plan, a series of projects throughout Louisiana designed to save the state from sinking into the Gulf. And we are studying those projects and if they can actually work and, and what changes they may bring to the coast. The idea behind those projects is to mimic Mother Nature uh, and what she did to build southeast Louisiana in the first place when the river would flood, water would overflow its banks, sediment would settle out, wetlands would be built. Uh, we've isolated the river from those wetlands now and we've, we've seen the, the consequences of that. We're experiencing tremendous land loss along um, our deltaic plain. So these projects would reconnect the river with that deltaic plain. The diversion will flood fresh water into the Barataria Basin, about an hour south of New Orleans. The structure will be two miles long and 1,600 feet wide, cutting through the Mississippi River in Plaquemines Parish. Once built, the diversion will be open at specific times during the year when levels of sediment are high. At 75,000 cubic feet per second, the massive water pressure could bring enough sediment into the area to reform land. The benefits of building a project sort of at that scale um, are that you can restore wetlands at that scale and at the scale that's meaningful to coastal Louisiana. So we think anywhere from you know, 21 up to you know, over 35, 36 uh, square miles of new wetlands can be created in the Barataria Basin as a result of implementing this project. Haas admits that these growth projections are just that, projections. So to convince the state that real land would grow, the CPRA relied on another engineering feat. This is the Center for River Studies at Louisiana State University. The center houses the 10,000 square foot Lower Mississippi River Physical Model, a replica based on the topography of the real Mississippi River Delta. This $4 million project was built with support from the CPRA. One of its many uses is to predict the future of the Mississippi River. We use the Lower Mississippi River Physical Model to help the state understand how how the river flows, how the sediment moves, how that sand, bed load sand moves down the river to help them with their kind of future planning, maybe how they might need to operate the river sediment diversions. So we make an efficiency equation based on previous pump data. The model can precisely replicate the movement of water and sediment along the Mississippi River. One hour of water flow in the model simulates about one year of real river flow, a physically accurate time lapse. Researchers can regulate water pressure and the amount of sediment moving to match real-time measurements along the Mississippi. And critically, this allows them to forecast how much sediment will accumulate over years and even decades. The model can show what would happen if the river was allowed to flow without its current levee restrictions. And so by looking at experiments or looking at the system over 10, 25, 50 years, we can look at how sea level rise is gonna impact the hydraulics and the transport of that sand. We can understand how operating, different ways to operate the river sediment diversions is going to change the way the sand is moving. Importantly, Haas says that the land growth would continue well beyond the 50 years the agency has calculated, just as long as sediment continues to be fed into the basin. Not everyone is happy with this plan. The basin features salt and brackish water that allows for certain sea life to thrive. It's rich with white and brown shrimp and oysters and is home to a multi-billion dollar commercial and recreational fishing industry. 
If the sediment diversion is built, countless gallons of fresh water will pour into the basin each year, drastically decreasing its salinity. The saltwater fishing industry here would be destroyed. No one wants to save the coast more than the people that live and work on the coast. We know something has to be done, but we just don't want our resources and our, our, our livelihoods and our culture and our heritage to be eliminated. George Ricks is a longtime fisherman and charter boat captain. He formed the nonprofit Save Louisiana Coalition to fight the diversion project. Rick says the group has 1,000 members, including crabbers, shrimpers, marina owners, and coastal residents. If the basin is filled with fresh water, the sea life will leave or die, he says, and all the fishermen will have to follow them or risk going out of business. It's going to eliminate the oysters. <laughs> it's going to eliminate our brown shrimp. It's going to cause socioeconomic hardship on low-income families. The Army Corps of Engineers issued a multi-year environmental impact study of the proposed plan. It confirmed what local fishermen fear, that the marine life and ecology of the bay would be disrupted. The Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority also agrees. As part of the proposed budget, it has earmarked millions to support the fishermen who would be affected by the project. These funds would be used to outfit boats with equipment for longer trips further out to saltwater estuaries. The bay would be forever changed, but the agency says that the state is at a point where something must be done immediately. The future of coastal Louisiana, if we don't implement big, bold projects like this, is, is really dire. Uh, and I don't mean to be alarmist about it, but anybody who spent any time um, along our coast, uh, whether you're fishing, hunting, working, whatever it is that you're doing along our coast, have seen the changes to our coast. We know it's going away. I, I don't think we can be successful without using the tools and the resources uh, in the Mississippi River to help restore our coast. We're not against trying to build land. We know, you know, we want to build land. We need land, but we need it now. And you, you, we have no problem with the sediment. Everyone knows that we need the sediment. It's the delivery system that we have a problem with. As of now, the Army Corps of Engineers is responding to comments made to its environmental impact report. A revised report may come as early as March 2022, followed by federal approval to begin work on the diversion later in the year. It's unlikely that Ricks and the fishermen will be able to stop the project from moving forward. The scientific community has overwhelmingly supported the plan. A group of 55 scientists and engineers, including Tulane University's Emily Farr, signed a letter pushing for its approval. I think the idea of a diversion is, is really, really good because it gets at the root of the problem, which is, you know, we have lost connection with our rivers because of channelizing them. We are, we're losing land, and if we, if we don't, get at the root of the problem um, in terms of, you know, increasing that sediment input so that we can build land. Um, the coast is just going to keep disappearing and water is going to keep moving inward and people are going to be uprooted. Communities are going to have to move. Um, and I think, I mean, I think that's a very real, a real result that we have to start thinking about. <laughs>